How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another High Peaks Report. I'm your host, Jonathan Zaharik, and welcome back to the number one Adirondack hiking YouTube channel. Not gonna lie, these reports are definitely few and far between. It's been a very interesting winter, as most of you know. In fact, it's probably been the worst winter I've ever seen in the 10 or 11 winters that I've come up here. For any of you that have gotten out into the high peaks this winter, I'm sure you know. We've had a, we did have a good stretch into December. We were hopeful, but February left us high and dry. Right before we get into it, I wanna make sure you guys are aware of the new High Peaks Guidebook releasing on May 7th. I've been spending years writing this and it is being published by Falcon Guides and I'm hoping that it becomes a quintessential guide here in the high peaks and to impact and educate and inspire many people like you for years to come. So pre-order it now. It supports me to the greatest extent if you purchase it through my website. And speaking of my website, I just revamped it and I'm offering a ton of new things this summer for my photographic services. Not only do I sell my landscape photography on the website, but I'm also now offering photographic opportunities for you. I'm gonna be hosting several workshops throughout this summer, as well as an opportunity for you to hire me as a tag along photographer for your journey. Are you gonna be finishing your 46 or going on some epic hike this summer you got planned or whatever? Hire me and I will come alongside you guys and document it, photograph it, create a video for you. You can go to my website, you can contact me, find more information about that there. With that being said, let's get right into the video. I started out mentioning the weather and you know, it is a beautiful bluebird day here. We just got around six to eight inches of snow here in Saranac Lake where I'm filming this. The Southern High Peaks region saw upwards of 12 to 16 inches of snow at some higher elevations, but at the high peaks at 4,000 feet, we saw over two feet of snow, upwards of 33 inches, and that's what it is right now. Heavy, wet snow, and with this warm weather, it is certainly not making it any lighter. So if you're going out this weekend, there might be several trails that will still be unbroken and you can expect the conditions to still be very winter. Although the DEC did put out an early mud season warning, really trails above 2,500 feet are still very winter-like. I do find it funny that they did put it out. I still think it was a little early to be an entire mud season advisory. It definitely was mud season this past week, but there's still multiple feet of snow at higher elevations, so still bring your snowshoes, guys. And if you're gonna go out, make sure you're safe, make sure you're prepared, and seriously, don't judge the top by the bottom of the hike. This past week, I actually went out and hiked Mount Marshall right before the snowstorm, and I'll tell you, it did not look pretty from the lodge at the start, and there was plenty of erosion. As you can clearly see, it looks like mud season, or early November or late April, whatever you wanna have. But by the time I got to Avalanche Lake, I was walking on the ice, It was the ice was more than a foot thick still, and you know, we have mildly cold temperatures going into this week and into next week, so the lake is still probably fine to walk on. That is a cautionary, all right? Don't take my word for it, but I did talk to the lake holding caretaker and she did concur at the time as well. But things are changing, so still be cautious. So I went and I did Mount Marshall via Cold Book Pass. The week prior, I went and did a 47 mile ski trip going from one end of the NPT all the way down to Long Lake, but via the Cold River Horse Trail, I was getting a lot of winter redline work done and that was a super <laughs> awesome and type two fun overnight trip. I also did the Dix Range twice in a week. I skied all five high peaks in one trip and then I went out and did a little bit more redline work by going up Lillian Brook and down Hunter's Pass. That was super fun. I was gonna go out today, but I actually had zero motivation when I woke up and I took that as a sign as to just not go out because if I don't wanna go out, I'm not gonna go out. I guess it's one of the curse and blessings of actually living here. I might consider myself a fair weather hiker, but really I kind of put my mental headspace. If I don't want to go out, then I'm not gonna go out. Anyway, the weather going into the next week or two is actually not looking too bad. We're gonna see temperatures higher into the 40s, still lowers into the 20s throughout the next 10 days with some precipitation coming this week, maybe some snow, a little bit of rain, and that's what it's gonna look like over the next week or so. The advanced forecasting models are indicating a couple precipitation systems coming in to the end of the month or so with another potential snowstorm hovering around the 26th, 27th of March. I know that's far away from now and things can change, but there definitely is precipitation coming our way. It's all dependent on what the temperatures do. 
Next up, we got the total solar eclipse. Guys, I've been preparing for this for years. I've been personally thinking about how I can photograph this different because there's gonna be a lot of people taking pictures of it and I don't just wanna take a regular picture of it. I saw the 2017 total solar eclipse in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and so I definitely got my good fill in there. So I'm gonna take advantage of this one here in the Adirondacks, assuming we have a day like today, go above the high peaks in an airplane. And I'm gonna be making a really cool video of that whole entire experience when the eclipse comes out, so be looking forward to that. But wherever you go, make sure you get there days prior and get to your specific spot early in the morning. I know it's at around 3 p.m. in the day, guys, but listen, it is gonna be a madhouse, and I highly encourage you not to go to the top of a high peak to watch it. It will look the same no matter where you are, elevation-wise. I encourage you to go more towards the path of totality rather than a beautiful view that you're gonna get because April 8th is definitely gonna be mud season, and it's definitely not gonna be fun conditions to hike and there's gonna be so many people who think it's gonna be fine and it's gonna be spring up top and it's gonna be warm and it's gonna be nice and I could tell you, it's probably not. Next thing I wanna talk about is the AMR permit system. This is obviously something that everyone is pretty much aware of at this point. If you're not, then you probably don't actually hike here, but the AMR permit system has come to a close, supposedly. The system went on for the past three years and it finally concluded. Both the AMR trustees and the DEC believe that it was a positive system. Shocker. Through the system, they saw improved public safety on the roads and visitor experience, effective management to access to natural resources, and a positive environmental impact through trail usage. And a few more pros. However, some cons to consider. The thing is you're already restricting access to an easement. Restrictions on access to this public easement have faced many criticisms. One big one is, well, the no-shows. In 2023, there were 17,000 reservations and only 10,000 people actually showed up, which is only 60%. That's a lot of no-shows. The system currently doesn't allow same-day reservations. So if there are cancellations or no-shows, people can't just show up and actually say, oh, hey, there's a spot available, go ahead. And the one that most people who are against the permit system find to be the greatest con is that it goes against the original easement intention. Now, I know what a lot of people are gonna say, it's not 1978 anymore, and so we have to adapt. And while I do find there's truth to that, others will say that it's too imperialistic and imposing on the simple forever wild constitutional rights of the Adirondack Park. The DEC is saying that it improved equitable access, but I personally don't know if I believe that it did improve equitable access. Obviously, this is an ongoing thing. The AMR obviously has rights over their land, and while it doesn't impact me necessarily in a negative way, I know there are multiple different opinions out there, and we will see what the DEC and the AMR eventually conclude with. Now it's time for Q&A. Liam asked if I've had any wildlife encounters like moose or bear, and I think I've answered this before, but no, I have not seen any Adirondack moose, and I've only seen one bear and it was dead, and it was a very wild experience. <laughs> no pun intended. Joe asks, what's your favorite summit sandwich or snack? I'm actually really bad when it comes to the food that I eat. Honestly, a good slice of leftover pizza in a Ziploc bag or a pre-made sandwich is always a go-to. Nutrition is somewhat difficult for me. It's a work in progress. Someone asks, Hey Jonathan, do you know of any affordable places to stay that aren't hostels? I prefer not to share living quarters because I snort. Honestly, this is really tough. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know the answer to this. It is expensive to come and stay up here and there are places in Jay and in Keene, but directly in Lake Placid or in Saranac Lake, finding a place that's not poor quality, under $100 is few and far between. If you know of any good spots, let me know. Put it in the comments below. Shane asks, what camera did you use for filming the Pinnacle Traverse video? The one that I'm shooting on right here. It is a Nikon Z8 and I freaking love it. It is a beast. That is, I've shot all of Nikon my entire life. It is one of the best camera systems in the world. And there's many things that I could go off on why that is true and why I think Nikon is king. But I absolutely love the Nikon Z8 and my 14 to 24 f2.8 lens. Steve asks, your conditioning is phenomenal. Have you ever run a half or full marathon? It would make great content, especially if you trained for the Lake Placid or Screen Lake runs. I appreciate the compliment. I do feel that I was in peak at like 2021 where I did my 25 high peaks in pretty much a day, 25 hours. And I'm trying to get back into that because I did take a year hiatus off from here, but I've never run in a 
official like road or just any official full marathon. I have run multiple half marathons on trail. While I do go out onto the trails and run more than 26.2 miles in one go, which is a marathon length, it's technically not an official marathon, but I have run marathon lengths. What I like to, totally. I think I just got to get in the right headspace. Well guys, that's it for the High Peaks Weekly Report. Don't forget to pre-order your guidebooks, check out my new website, and if you're not already a Patreon supporter of the channel, you can find that in the description below as well. It helps support the channel and gives you guys the opportunity to see lots of exclusive content. I'm putting out new videos every single month on Patreon, and I got one coming this Saturday. So with that being said, I'm Jonathan Zaharik. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.